Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro video for you guys. And what is that, you might ask? Well, as you can see, tonight we are going to be attempting to do some astrophotography with my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra on deep sky objects. Alrighty guys and gals, so as you can see, what we're using to accomplish our little adventure tonight is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i Pro. A little bit of, a little bit of a mouthful. <laughs> uh, but basically what this is, is it's a super lightweight um, German Equatorial Man, essentially. Um, this then is rated to carry up to 11 pounds. Um, it does have a bunch of different tracking modes on it. It could be either battery operated with some AA batteries, uh, or you could uh, power it from USB. Alrighty, guys. And then just overall, you know, this is not a review, you know, like a hardcore review of pushing the limits of this mount. It's just, you know, kind of like a lighthearted thing to see what, you know, what I can accomplish with the smartphone, you know, since this is a really light duty mount. Perhaps, you know, you do have one of the newer smartphones that are able to do, you know, um, actually, you know, fairly, you know, good results uh, for what they are, you know, for being a phone on uh, the night sky um and you're you know you're kind of thinking about picking up one of these mounts all right and then so since the moon was out on this particular night i did decide to uh take a few pictures of the moon so here you can kind of see me you know this is after i manually focused on the moon already you know just kind of snapping away a few shots and here's kind of the uh, cropped result that I got on the moon uh, with, uh, you know, at, at the time of this making, uh, the Samsung phone that, I, phone that I'm using is a top of the line phone, so it kind of gives you an idea of what you could expect on the moon. All right, so moving on to deep sky, um, what I was able to do, um, you know, I, I didn't do like a bunch of research into, you know, what all type of settings I'm really supposed to use. You know, I kind of used my knowledge from my DSLR uh, days uh, to kind of, you know, set the settings. So I did manual focus. Um, I set the exposure time to the maximum length of 30 seconds um, for on, on, on my phone. Um, and the ISO was set to uh, 800, as you kind of, you know, saw me run through the settings there. And then basically, yeah, I turned the tracking on onto the star tracking rate. Um, I will say that uh, I did not, like, you know, really spend a huge amount of time polar aligning them out. I just kind of, I did look through the built-in um, polar aligning scope to make sure that Polaris is, you know, where it's supposed to be in there. Um, I figured that for, you know, the very, very wide field of view that I was doing, um, you know, that should be plenty good enough. And after 30 seconds, and this is with zero image processing, here's the results that I got. Uh, this one, the first one, is uh, the region around the North American Nebula and Cygnus, which was almost, you know, straight overhead at the time. Um, you know, I could kind of vaguely make out the nebula in there. Um, I think having the moon out definitely did not help. And obviously I was not using like any kind of filter or anything like that. So it's kind of a tough object, but it is a really wide field one. So I just want to see if it kind of pull it in. And then the second image that I got for you guys, I, I thought oh, this one was actually kind of cool, even though, though it doesn't reveal like any cool nebulas or galaxies or anything like that. But... I was able to capture the entire constellation of Lyra uh, in one image. So for me, that's kind of cool because I normally don't really do stuff like this. I don't really shoot with the DSLR, you know, for astronomy with the wide lens or anything like that. So it's kind of cool to capture that. Alrighty guys, so um, just overall, just to kind of conclude, uh, what did I think about using the mount? Uh, you know, just overall setting it up and running it uh, for my, you know, I'd say Kind of very basic application of, you know, using a cell phone on it. Um, well, what I'll say is that, um, 
You know, the capacity is rated at 11 pounds on this. Um, I think in ideal situations, if there's no women, there's no nothing going on, you know, you give the mount plenty of time to settle and use it on a very stable tripod. Uh, you might be able to pull that off. I mean, my phone with the, uh, you know, mount uh, that I used, uh, you know, the little bracket to, to hold it, which is actually the same one that I record YouTube videos with. <laughs> um, it, you know, I probably weighed like a couple of pounds, and I'd say even that, like, the mount was kind of feeling so. And, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm kind of skeptical of the 11-pound capacity. I mean, unless, you know, I mean, you'd have to have everything be perfect uh, for it to do 11 pounds, I think, for, especially if, you know, if you're shooting over, like, 50 millimeters in um, focal length. Overall, though, I will say that the mount is about as easy to operate as it gets. I mean, you just turn the dial onto the desired tracking ray and just kind of starts tracking. Um, polar aligning this should be pretty easy. I do the, like that it does have a you know built-in polar scope. Uh, for most you know more advanced applications, you're probably doing some kind of digital polar alignment. But with something that's you know this light and small, you're probably not going to want to you know, lug around a laptop with sharp cap to do a polar alignment with. So I do like that they do include um, the polar alignment scope. So anyhow, hopefully you guys found this video to be entertaining and interesting. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.